Welcome to an introduction to accounting brought to you by Parkbench Tutors. In this short podcast we are going to look at the principles behind a cash flow statement using our own personal experiences of day-to-day purchases, monthly budgeting and so on. So I've set out my table, so I've got an opening balance, I've got my inflows, wages, normal, overtime and anything else and I've got my outflows which are pretty much all expenses. What I'm going to do first of all is set it up for every month of the year. It's only got January for the moment. I'm clicking on and highlighting the January cell and when I've got that little black cross at the bottom holding down the left button of the mouse I'm dragging across and filling in all the months. The next thing I want to do is to label my variables. You can see that this one's already been labeled my normal wage so I don't need to do anything about that. Now I'm going to take the next one and what I'm doing now is a right click and going to define name and what it's doing is suggesting the name that's in the column to the left of it so I'm accepting that name there. I'm going to define the name now for the council tax so I will accept that and there we are for the car petrol gasoline I will accept that car insurance is fine and we should have all these in in a second here we are and define the name of the last one which is a loan that's fine right my wage is normal will be equal to whatever I put in that cell so that's nothing at the moment but I can drag that on so that I filled in wages normal for each of these cells we are we're just checking through to see if that has in fact happened okay the rent I can do in the same way because that will be equal to whatever I put in here I can just prove this. I'm doing it by month. Let's assume that my wages per month were 1,950. Once I enter it, you see it enters the 1,950 across each month. In the same way, if my rent was 600 pounds per month, as soon as I enter it, there we are, it fills it all in. Right, so we can do that. My council tax will equal whatever I put in this cell. Just get that correct. There we are. Now I need to get it so I've got that in. There we are. I'm dropping that into all of those boxes. Now my car, what I've got here is something different. I've got my car petrol, my gasoline, my car insurance, my car tax, my loan. My loan is going to be paid regularly, so I'm going to fill that in for the moment. I'm going to say that's equal to that amount. <laughs> okay, that's fine for the moment. Now, let's say that my overtime wages are going to be in the first month in January. We'll say I'm going to earn £60 overtime and that I get another income by doing a little bit of work on a Saturday of 120 so my total inflows would be equal to the sum of those three which is there my expenses that I've got so far I haven't got them all remember will be equal to the sum of all of these and my closing balance will be equal to my opening balance which we haven't got yet plus any other inflows minus any outflows right, well let's assume that I started off with two and a half thousand in the bank so I've just entered that now what I've got at the moment are things that are left which could have some variables in and that's why I've left them there for the moment. 
but let's say we've got a hundred pounds to be paid each month on a loan and we will say that the council tax per month is 120 so I've still got car food clothing and so on now there are a number of ways that I can do this so here's one of the ways that I can do it I can say that my car gas or petrol and gasoline so on let's say I spend 29 pounds a month I'm obviously not going very far on that and that I divide my car insurance up into what it costs per month right so I would have to do it that way then and now I would have to say my car tax would again be what it costs per month now in this case I would then say that the amount for my car would be equal to that my car petrol plus my car insurance plus my car tax what I've done is averaged it out there and so I can drag that across and fill all of that in now we'll say that I get to fix the amount that I'm going to spend on the food and clothing so I'm going to spend um, let's say um, 160 a month on food and I'm going to spend on average £10 a month on clothing now my electricity and gas I'm more likely to spend more in the winter months than the summer months the phone and the internet I could say I'm going to try and limit myself there and only spend £25 a month I'm not going to be using much internet for that obviously and so far then I've got a series of expenses but I've got some which would vary right so just out of interest I will say that I spend a hundred pounds during the winter months so I'm going to enter 100 up to March and I'm going to then say that we have 100 from October onwards and now I can say that hopefully in the summer months let's hope some April will be warm we're going to only spend about 50 okay so I have my total inflows which I can drag across yeah. and I have my total outflows for each month Now, my opening balance for February will be equal to the closing balance there. So we can do that. Okay, now the other thing that I need to look at here is what can I save for my holidays? And at the moment, because it's not an expense I've incurred, right? I would be looking to spend that let's say in May and June so let's say I spend 1500 on going on holiday in May and I'm going to have no other expenses for the moment because I want to see how this works out so I can now say that this one will always be the same I can drag that all the way across now what I can see at the moment is if I look at my budget it is slowly reducing largely of course by what happens here so let's just drag across here for my opening balances each time and I've got a picture of what's happening during the year here we are through to December and it looks as if I'm doing fairly well for the moment so I could probably afford another holiday so let's say I'm going to go on holiday in September and spend another 1500 there and I'm going to go on holiday again in December for Christmas week and we'll say I'm just going to spend a thousand there right just pull that back was not quite intended so everything's looking quite rosy at the moment so my other expenses let's say on average now I've decided they are in fact about £60 per month
And there we are. It's almost complete, except that I have my other income. Let's say I receive something as an annuity about every one, two, three, four, five months. One, two. And we would say that I hope for some overtime. Obviously not during the holiday week but here, so I'm hoping for some overtime there. And I'm hoping for a bit more overtime here. And now I can have my whole picture. But I can also, by setting up variables, do something else. Let's assume, for example, that my rent goes up. Ooh, gone up to 800. Now what happens, of course, is that my bank balance at the end is reducing, right? Uh, let's suppose that uh, my uh, my car uh, expenses, I want to spend more on petrol, I move a little further away perhaps, right? And you can see it's altering everything all the way through again, it's altering all my closing balances. Now in a business it works with exactly the same idea. We list all our inflows, we list all our outflows, we take our opening balance, add the inflows, subtract the outflows, and we get a closing balance.